everyone, I'm Kate. I am a product manager here with GitHub Bottles. And I'm Damien. I am in Devrel, one of the dev advocates over at GitHub as well. And we're going to do just a lightning round of context before we get into the actual demo, starting with the most important question, which is why did you build GitHub Models? So GitHub is on this mission where we're trying to empower all software developers. And that includes those of you who came from a traditional background, as well as the millions more who are now joining us from non-traditional paths. But we know that if we want to be the home of software development, we have to evolve with you. And we also know that AI development is very top of mind for you. And we know that it's a mess. Uh, there's all these tools, there's all this context switching, there's all these new teammates, and you got to work with them in all these new ways. And we are here to simplify all of that. So we're going to take you from the day that your boss comes to you and says, hey, what if we added some AI to that, to you saying it is shipped and it works. And that brings us to dun, 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 the new GitHub Models repo integration. So what this is, is a suite of AI developer tools. And that includes prompt management, that includes evaluating your outputs, that includes comparing models, and again, taking you from idea to shit. And to show off all these cool functionalities that we just shipped for you, uh, Damien and I built this uh, very serious and very complicated app called Build 2025 Conversation Openers. So basically, it's an AI-powered chat app. And if you're looking for an icebreaker to network with someone at this, um, you can just put in a little tidbit about them, and then it'll give you an AI-generated, thoughtful, curious question uh, to break the ice. Um, if any of you want to start using the app, go ahead and go to this website, or if you just want to like mess around with it while we're doing this demo, um, memorize this URL like really quickly, uh, and now I'm going to pass it over to Damien. Yeah. Um, first thing I'm going to do is show you this app running so you know it's real. Oh, so I've already asked a question. <laughs> Let's do it again. Um, and also, uh, Kate was being really generous uh, and saying that we wrote this app. I didn't write the app, Kate. But yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm not capable of these things. So, uh, for example, if I was to put in something like, let's pick on Caitlin's just walking away with an amazing camera. Uh, she has a great camera. And then that's an impressive camera. What kind of photos do you enjoy taking most? Yeah, great. That's probably better than I could come up with myself. So let's, let's jump out of the demo. Let's look at the code that exists here. So. This is the repo. Um, you, this is public, so you can go and have a look at this and fork it yourself if you want. Um, and let's say I'm a developer joining this project. Um, I can look at the code, obviously, but I want to understand what the AI in this application is doing. So you're probably familiar with this screen if you've used GitHub before, but not this one. So models is new. Mm -hmm. um, now, straight away, when I get into models, I get these kind of onboarding instructions. It gives me an idea of what the models tab is for. I can watch videos if I want. There's links to create, like create a sample prompt and so on. Um, a bit further down, you even get code right there, which lets you use any of the 40 plus models that we have in GitHub models. So like just check out the, the dropdown. There's some new ones as well that you would notice from you know, this morning's keynote if you're watching. Um, but basically any of these, this code is you know, ready to go in multiple languages um, and using different SDKs. So, our enterprises love that catalog because all of those models are hosted on Azure, which means that all the data just passes briefly through GitHub and Azure and then is deleted. So none of that data is going back to the model providers. Uh, and furthermore, if you're an org admin, you can bop right on up to org settings, uh, and then you can select exactly which models your team has access to or which ones are not allowed in case one is too expensive. So you've got full control over your data and your cost and your privacy. Yeah, really about model choice, which is great. Um, now, over on the left, if I click over to the prompts page, uh, I can see the prompts that are in my application. Now, these are any files that end in .prompts.yaml, YML, um, no matter how deep they are in that folder structure. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is great, right? <laughs> yeah, it's great because this is actually something we've heard over and over again is in user interviews is people being like, where are the prompts? Um, I distinctly remember the largest enterprise we ever talked to. The director of engineering says he just constantly like, where the heck are they? So this solves that. Yep. So um, if I want to see you know, what they look like, there's a, a view file here. So I can go straight to that file. Um, and you'll see you know, here are the system messages and the user messages. There's a couple of other things in here 
test data, I'm pronouncing that correctly for this country, and evaluators. We'll come back to that a little bit later, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at that in a sec. Um, all right. Now, if I didn't already have prompt in this tab, I would want to be able to add a new prompt for my application that I can use a little bit later. Now, I could do that here, but I'm actually going to go to the playground, which is kind of a really nice place to just experiment with prompts and compare them and, sorry, with the different models to see which ones are good and which ones are not good for your scenario. Um, so let's kind of recreate. I will just close this to give me some more room. Let's kind of recreate our app, uh, the prompt for that app. So this is a helpful assistant to just one icebreaker question based on a tidbit about the human. So you could do something like, uh, just went to an AI talk at a conference. Mm -hmm. um, and see what comes up. There you go. What's the most surprising thing you learned at the AI talk? Cool. That's great. Um, but if I wanted to compare this, this is GPT-4.1. If I wanted to compare this to another one, so let's say DeepSeek v3, um, what's great is that compare tab allows me to like pit these models against each other to see which one is you know, better for my use case. Mm -hmm. So um, the other great thing about this is uh, the system prompt and the chat can sync across the two of them. So I don't need to you know, type it in twice and so on. It also means you can compare the speed of them because they run at the same time. So if I was to say something like, uh, they just talked to the CEO, oh, that would be, um, there you go. So you can see DeepSeek's given me quite a large response. I actually prefer this one for my application. I don't want that big line of text. So I've done my comparison, but I'm going to stick with 4.1. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Um, I think I will use this model. So I could do this to find the code, but I actually want a prompt file. So there's a button right there for creating a prompt file. Um, to, to use this, I need a little bit more information. For one thing, I need the name of the prompt. So uh, question, answer. Um, and then the user prompt is you know, what I'm passing through to the model. In my case, I'm just going to do input. But you can see I could probably prefix that or suffix it with something that makes a bit more sense for the, for the use case. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's other variables I can look at as well. Um, I can also just run this now uh, by giving it some input and you know, experiment that way. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, if I wanted to use this, I can commit it and it gives me the, the usual kind of PR flow that I would normally get for any files in my repo. So I don't have to be a developer to kind of use this. It walks me through that flow anyway if you're a, you know, a manager who wants to you know, tweak the prompts that you've got as well. Yeah. And this will actually auto-generate the YAML for you because we know how much you all don't love writing YAML. Um, right now, we're starting with just .prompt.yaml files, but I know some of you want Markdown, some of you want Prompty files. Um, if there is another file format that you want, please come talk to me afterwards. Um, or even if you just want to like verbally upvote uh, the prompt file formats that we're already thinking about. Yep. Now, I already had my question prompter uh, here, so here's my... Is my answer. Now, if I run it this time, you'll see it's actually putting data in there already. So it's got kind of sample data. Um, if I wanted to change it to make it something a bit better for me, like, can you make sure you speak Australian? <laughs> Thanks. Um, and run it again, then you get a oh, nice keyboard, you're into custom builds or just love the feel of a good clicky one. That's a little bit better. I can understand that a little bit better. Um, that's great. So um, we've but we've also got some extra stuff in this. This, um, this prompt actually came from some test data that we put in there as well. So if we go over to the compare tab, mm -hmm. um, we can see a little bit more here. So there's some evaluators, I'll get to that in a sec, but there's the prompt over here as well. And then of course, there's our data set for testing. Now, if I wanted to compare, let's say, uh, once again, my GPT-4.0 with, uh, I'll copy the original prompt and choose DeepSeek again. B3. And now if I run it, it's actually going to run through all of these, let's zoom out a bit, um, run through all of these uh, across my test data. That's great. Sorry. Oh, that's a sick key. Um, <laughs> pretty good. Uh, so we can see like the different responses across the models across our test data. Now I've got these ones in here, but I can also import them if I had a CSV or something like that, um, which would be really cool. Okay. 
And I see Damien, you've also got some evaluators on there. That was because we heard from a lot of customers that they want that quantitative analysis of whether a new prompt variation or a new model is actually better. Like they don't just want to base it on vibes. But right now, if you want to do that, it's super complicated. There's all these third party tools. You got to do a lot of copying and pasting. So we made sure to make it really, really simple and easy for our first iteration here. Yeah, so you can see we have an evaluator here that the output should be a question. So if we look at it, it's just basically just looking for a question mark in the, in the thing. So it's a very simple one. Um, I had a bit of an experiment with these as well, and there's a lot of different evaluators you can add. You can even do custom prompt ones. So you can get it to evaluate, for example, how Australian is this sentence, <laughs> um, if you wanted to, and then have your own custom evaluators. And they would appear in here as, you know, pass, fail, what kind of, you know, performance they had across these different evaluations that you care about. All right. So what do we need to do next? Do you want to set up one of those evaluators? We'll just see how yeah, it works. Okay. I'm going to do that one actually, because it's fun. Um, actually, no, the easy one to do, because we have um, in the test data, we've got some um, expected responses. So this is probably not going to go well because I asked it to speak Australian, but if we add a similarity one and run these, and just while it's running, I'll show you um, you can see there's an expected result for each of them as well. So um, it passed. It should be a question. That's great. It was 50% similar. This was 100% similar. That's impressive. Um, yeah, and so on. But this one was only 25% similar. So you can see across a number of different evaluators, you can kind of tell how likely they are. I love the, um, the custom one because it's basically using another model to determine how accurate this one is. So you can use a really kind of cheap one, mini or nano, um, put in the prompt and then set up pass and fail criteria as well. So like really, really powerful stuff here. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, if I was happy with this and I wanted to use it, obviously I can commit those changes to my prompt um, and it runs through that same PR workflow as well. And that's really important because I know a lot of product managers like myself want to get involved in uh, prompt iteration, but I know that I for sure don't want to be breaking something technical if I'm changing the prompt. Like if my engineers need a specific JSON output, I can't be messing that up. So that's why I love the fact that these prompt changes go through a commit and PR flow so that it's fully validated. It's just like any other code change that you happen to make at GitHub. Yep. Now I've gone a little bit fast, so we have like a minute left. I find when we're doing these model ones, within reason, it's kind of fun to ask the audience what they want to add to the prompt to see if it's any, if it's useful. Is anyone willing to like ask me to add something to this? Absolutely. No, no one at all. Okay, great. Um, we, the one I, the one we tend to use for um, uh, demos a lot is um, uh, you know, talk like a pirate. Um, which, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's a pretty good one because we, uh, we tend to get all of the, yeah, RM80, be that clippity, yeah. That's my personal favorite ones. Yeah, <laughs> That's my go-to for system prompts. <laughs> yeah. By the way, pretty much any, any chance you get to change the system prompts for anything you use, GitHub Copilot or anything like that, putting in pirate stuff just makes your day a little bit better. Um. <laughs> Much more professional, too. Much more professional. Yeah, so obviously um, this compare page is incredibly powerful, not just with comparing models against each other, but comparing the tone of your prompt and the accuracy of your prompt. Because mm -hmm. we all know if we've worked with, um, with AI stuff before, a few words or a sentence or something in that prompt can make a huge difference to the responses that you get back. Mm -hmm. So this is a really handy way of, of testing out a bunch of different prompts, their tones, the words you use in those prompts across a whole you know, heap of test data that you have yeah. under all that. Yeah. So to wrap us up, we are helping to take you from AI idea to ship, hopefully in this most simple way possible. We would love for you to jump in and try it out. This is live now as of today. Um, if you love it, if you hate it, if you feel anything about it, please come talk to me and give me feedback. I would love to hear how we can iterate and make this better for you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Okay.